Hello, my name is Paul Rupar, and I am an associate professor in the Department of Chemistry and Biochemistry at the University of Alabama. And for the next couple of minutes, I will discuss uh, some of the research projects in my, my research group. So first off, we are a primarily interested in, in polymer chemistry, and we are interested in nitrogen-rich polymers, as well as the upcycling of, of waste materials. The techniques we use um, encompass aspects of both organic and inorganic chemistry, as well as polymers chemistry. And, and we're also very much interested in the material properties of the materials that, that we make. So first off, what's a polymer? So polymers are large macromolecules composed of repeating monomers. And you encounter polymers every day in your life. Common examples include polymers such as polystyrene, which is used in uh, food waste or food containers, for example. Uh, in the middle here, we have PPTA, and this is a uh, higher performance polymer, commonly know, are known as Kevlar. It can be used for making things like bulletproof vests or canoes. And then on the right hand side, we have polyisoprene. And this is both a naturally occurring polymer as well as a polymer that is made synthetically. And it is most often associated with rubbers and gloves and whatnot. A key message I want you to take away from this slide is that the structure of these polymers are, are just they're just big organic molecules and they obey the same rules of organic chemistry that you learned in undergraduate chemistry classes and we can use the power of organic chemistry to modify these polymers to do chemical transformation on these polymers to make new polymers and so uh, polymer chemistry is as a way for organic chemists to make functional materials and design materials with specific properties and we can tune them for a broader perspective i would argue that the field of polymer chemistry has impacted modern life more than any other any other um, area of chemistry um, everything around you consists or is, co is coated with uh, synthetic polymers um, you have obviously obvious things like plastic cups or rubber duckies and chewing gum and, and tires but if you look at the, the paints on the wall in the room you're in right now um, any furniture you're sitting on these are all either made of polymers or have polymer coatings many of the medicines that you take that are prescribed by doctors have polymers as the key impo component of the compounding of those medicines. Even, even cosmetics are filled with polymers. Polymers are everywhere. And, and, um, and polymer chemists are, are widely sought by industry to develop new polymers. Okay, let's talk about the, one of the polymers that we're interested in in the root bar group. One of them is called polyethylene imine or PEI. It is a nitrogen rich polymer with a wide range of applications. For example, it can be used in antimicrobial and antifouling coatings. It can be used for chelating inorganic um, ions as well as depositing those ions. Uh, like all amines, it's very good at absorbing CO2. And so you, you can create CO2 sponges from PEI and PEI like polymers. And it can also be used in drug delivery and also in, in non viral gene transfection. And I'll just touch upon this a bit more on the next slide. So if you take PEI or PEI like polymers and you put them into solution, they become cationic. And when they're cationic, they will strongly interact with polyions, polyanions, such as DNA or RNA. And they'll form what are called polyplexes. And these polyplexes get absorbed by, uh, by cells. And when the cells absorb these polyplexes, they will then transiently, temporarily express the genetic material of the DNA or RNA. And, the, and this process is used by a number of drugs currently undergoing clinical trials. Now, although these polymers are very powerful, it turns out they're really hard to make. And, and, and so these nitrogen-rich polymers don't have simple roots um, to, for controlled polymerizations. And that's what we try and develop in the root part group. So we're very much interested in, in developing new synthetic approaches to make PEI like polymers in a controlled fashion. And by control, I mean that we can target specific molecular weights and that the molecular weight distribution of those polymer samples are, are 
fairly narrow. And so one approach that we use is to take an azeridine, and this nitrogen Nuremberg ring is called an azeridine. We put an electron with the drawing group on the nitrogen, and then we hit it with a strong nucleophile, and that causes an anionic ring opening polymerization that, if done correctly, is controlled. And afterwards, we can remove the electron with the drawing group to form the corresponding uh, polyethylene amine like polymer. A more recent for area for our research group is that of, that of the field of upcycling and we recently funded by the NSF to do some research on upcycling. And, and what we're doing here is developing chemistries that allow us to convert waste polymers into more valuable materials. As many of you know, recycling of polymers does not work well um, for, for a whole pile of, of, of complex reasons. Um, and upcycling is an alternative. And the idea here is that we're gonna take something that's essentially worthless, garbage, post-consumer polymer waste, and we are gonna do some chemical transformations and we're gonna make a new material that, that is, is actually more valuable than the, than the um, parent polymer that we're starting with. So this, this project is in early days, but I think we, we have some pretty um, exciting results. I'm not showing any because we haven't published anything yet in this um, area, but we should have some exciting papers hopefully um, coming out this year. In terms of equipment and techniques, what we do, at least physically in the lab, looks a lot like what you'd encounter in a typical organic or inorganic synthetic lab. So lots of beakers and solvents and whatnot. So if you enjoy doing wet chemistry in undergraduate uh, labs, then, then you'd likely enjoy the techniques that we use in, in our research group. Um, however, if you don't like wet chemistry, you, you probably don't want to work in my research group. Uh, in terms of characterization, again, we use techniques very similar to what you encounter in a organic lab or inorganic synthetic lab. So lots of NMR. NMR is probably our go-to characterization technique. This is an example of an NMR of a polymer we synthesized a number of years ago. Uh, one thing you'll notice that's, that's different from what you'd expect with a small molecule is the signals are much more broad. And, and so a polymer NMR signals tend to broad and this is, is primarily a function of the fact that you have a large polymer chain with lots of slightly different chemical environments along that polymer chain. We also use other techniques such as IR, UV-vis, fluorescence, mass spectrometry, x-ray crystallography for new monomers, and etc. Some other techniques that are a bit different than what you might encounter um, in an organic or inorganic uh, undergraduate lab. Uh, we, we do what's called size exclusion chromatography or SEC and this is a way of, of measuring or estimating molecular weights of polymers and so on the left hand side this red um, trace is, is an SEC trace of, of one of our polymers and again we're just using this to, to estimate how big the polymers are. Uh, we use a lot of mass spectrometry again it's a way of estimating polymer molecular weight as well as analyzing the, the chain ends of the polymers and this is a on the top right hand corner is a the mass spectrum of one of our polymers. And it's, what's interesting is just how many different chain lengths you see in that sample. And this is actually a fairly narrow molecular weight distribution sample. And, and in some cases, we have polymers that undergo self-assembly. In, in those cases, we, we um, start looking at these things on the nanoscale, and we, we take like SEM and TEM images of them. So sorry, in summary, um, students in my group design, synthesize, and study novel polymers. We use modern synthetic chemistry to develop new and functional materials. And, and given the nature of our research, we often interact with researchers from other disciplines, um, especially in engineering, mechanical engineering, chemical engineering, to help characterize some of the, the properties of, of, of materials that we make. So lots of opportunities for collaboration. And if you have any questions, um, but my research or you want to talk, just send me an email and I'd be happy to uh, set up a conversation. Thank you.